morning or good afternoon, depending on where you're joining us from, everyone. My name is Jesse, and I am with Exploring by the Seat of Your Pants. I know we've got a good new audience today, and so, if you are joining us for the first time, we are all about bringing conservation, adventure, and science into classrooms around the world. And what a day it's been! We just wrapped up in French with Parks Canada, talking about fire in Banff National Park and how they use it as a tool for conservation. We've gone to the Antarctic to talk with a polar guy, talking about all her expeditions to the bottom of the world. We've talked about extinct languages and trying to bring back endangered languages around the world with Santia. And today we are going to wrap up with Dr. Renee Byers on one of my very favorite topics, and that is elephants. Now, we were joined last year by the Elephantatics team talking about all the amazing work they do to raise awareness for one of the world's most incredible creatures. Uh, again, elephant is a, an animal that pretty much everyone on this planet knows. They know to see. Um, and, and if you haven't had a chance to see one, they really are truly extraordinary. I hope everyone gets that chance. But till then, we're going to dive in and learn a little bit more about this majestic creature, some of the threats that they face, and some of the ways that you, no matter where you're joining from in the world, can take part to help them. So without further ado, I'm going to bring in Dr. Byers to take us away. Thank you so much for joining us today, and go for it. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Um, thank you all so much for attending this talk. Um, I'm a researcher at the University of British Columbia in Canada, and I'm also a director at the nonprofit organization Elephantatics, which is based in Vancouver, B.C., uh, where we don't have any elephants here, but still <laughs> we are promoting elephant conservation through direct action and education. I work on a variety of topics in conservation. Uh, one of the things I've been working on a lot is uh, recently is rewilding, but I've also been working on elephants and I've actually lived in Africa for many years in both Central and East Africa. So today I'm going to take you on a little journey to Africa. Uh, both East and Central. And in, in East Africa, we find savanna, which is basically uh, a grassland with uh, trees in it. Uh, but in the center of Africa, we have these dense rainforests, humid rainforests uh, that are uh, difficult often to, to, to walk through. There are elephants living in both uh, habitats. Uh, there are actually three species of an elephant in total. There's the Asian elephant and there are two species of African elephant. We're only going to talk about uh, African elephants today. I think many of you know, or everybody knows elephants, of course, but I bet that some of you do not know that there were actually two species of African elephants. And that's only been recognized uh, recently uh, through genetic uh, research on these animals. So we have the forest elephant, uh, which lives in the forest, obviously, which is smaller than the savanna elephant. Uh, so it can get through the dense uh, vegetation more easily. And then we have the big uh, savanna elephants uh, that also have uh, more curved uh, tusks and live in much more open areas. There are a lot of cool facts about elephants, just way too many to get into them all. Um, just to mention a few, uh, they live in groups, they're led by females, yes, females, and uh, the males, uh, when they uh, reach a certain age, they're being kicked out of the group or they leave the group and they live on their own. Uh, they can communicate uh, through uh, infrasound, which is actually a sound which is much lower than humans can hear, um, over very large distances, up to four, even eight kilometers sometimes. So they can communicate with each other without even seeing each other. They can swim, and I've seen them often crossing uh, rivers in Central Africa, and sometimes they're totally submerged, and you only see their trunk sticking out. They use their trunk for breathing, smelling, trumpeting, drinking, and grabbing food and other things. And, of course, they have tusks, that they use for digging and defending themselves. We're going to talk about more about their role in the habitats that they live than actually about the animal themselves, because elephants are actually really, really important. They're really beautiful animals, but they're also very, very important animals um, for their ecosystems. So I, I guess that everybody kind of knows what an ecosystem is. An ecosystem is a type of habitat really, um, and we have uh, many different ecosystems in Africa, and I just mentioned uh, tropical rainforest and the savannah. Uh, but elephants are also part of a complex biodiverse food web, and a food web is a community of animals and plants that live together and that interact with each other. 
Elephants are also keystone species, and we'll see in a minute what that means. Animal populations are, they don't grow indefinitely. They don't grow forever. They're being regulated. So it's not like that you have like a bunch of herbivores, of plant eaters, and they just keep on growing and growing and growing. If they would, you know, they would completely overwhelm everything else. So what regulates or what controls the populations of these animals? There's two types of control that we find generally in, in nature. There's top-down control and bottom-up control. With top-down control, the plant eaters, or we call them herbivores, they eat the plants, their numbers, they increase, but then the predators, they kill them, such as, for example, lions in the Serengeti. The lions kill the herbivores and they keep their population under control so that they actually, you know, they're being killed before they run out of food and their numbers kind of stay uh, more or less uh, stable. So what they found, what we found, for example, in the Serengeti National Park in Tanzania is that the predators, they regulate the numbers of smaller plant eaters, although the big predators also kill big plant eaters, but they don't have a lot of influence on their numbers. There's also another way that populations of animals are controlled, and that's what we call bottom-up control. So larger herbivores, uh, they're controlled by this mechanism. Their numbers are controlled by this mechanism. They eat, for example, grass or other plants, and they compete with each other. So at some point, they run out of food, and their numbers decline either through starvation or through a decline in birth rate. So what we found in Serengeti, for example, is that it is the food that actually controls the wildebeest numbers in the Serengeti and not the predators. Where do elephants fit into this picture? What do elephants eat? Elephants eat bark, uh, as you can see in the tree in the background. Uh, which is completely, it's a baobab tree, and the bark is stripped away uh, by elephants, and they use their tusks uh, to, to strip the bark off, off the tree and then eat it. They also eat leaves, they eat grass, they eat branches of trees, and they eat fruit. So basically, you can see, you can look at elephants as predators of plants, and they control, for example, uh, the numbers of trees in certain uh, uh, in some circumstances or in some habitats. For example, in um, the Maasai Mara in Kenya, the savanna is being kept open by elephants who eat uh, young trees and they don't give them a chance to grow large. So they have a very important impact on their habitats. But elephants are also keystone species. And what is a keystone? A keystone is actually a stone that you find in an arch. That's where the name comes from. And if you remove that stone, the whole arch collapses. So this, that stone in particular is very important for the whole structure. And it's the same with certain species and ecosystems that have a very important role and actually have a more important role in their ecosystems than other animals do. And we call these species keystone species. If those species are removed from the ecosystem, for example, you know, they go extinct or they're hunted to extinction or killed or whatever, uh, they disappear, then the ecosystem changes and can even collapse. So elephants have an important role because they're so big. Uh, for example, they provide for other animals. They maintain open spaces in dense rainforests that allow certain species to live there. They create pathways in those forests. In Central Africa, you can find these really big, almost motorways going right through the forest that uh, elephants keep open that other animals uh, also use to go around. They dig water holes in the desert that provide water for other animals, and those other animals may not be able to live there if they don't have access to that water. They also disperse seed through their dung, which we will see in a minute, and they even help to regulate the climate. An example of this is, can be found in Central Africa in uh, big open areas where you find salt licks and 
elephants, they love the salt, they love the minerals. They come there to feed on the minerals, but they also, by doing so, keep the whole area open. And you find in these areas that animals that you would not find in the dense forest. So they provide habitat for these other animals that way. Elephants are also important in, for dispersing seeds. Uh, for example, in the forest, um, they eat a lot of fruit. Um, they digest the seeds, but the seeds, they survive. Uh, they come out of the elephant with the dung. The dung is de being deposited and provides a, fertile, uh, um, uh, for a fertilizer, actually, for the seeds. And the seeds grow into uh, bushes and trees, etc. So a lot of trees and bushes depend on animals like elephants for their dispersal. Without the elephants, the forests would be a lot, a lot less diverse. And elephants are not, only, uh, are not the only seed dispersers, but many monkeys in the rainforest are seed dispersers, and many birds are too. So these are all keystone species. And without these species, or if these species would disappear, the forest uh, would change. But elephants also have an important role in the climate, even the global climate, because they disperse heavy seeds from large trees. And, you know, they, they're big, so they can eat these really big fruits, these big uh, with, that contain seeds, and, and so they disperse them. Uh, but they also trample the dense understory in the forest so that large trees get a chance to grow big and they have enough light and they don't have to compete with all these little bushes that would otherwise be there. So what does that have to do with climate? Well, without elephants, we would have fewer large trees. And large trees store a lot of carbon. So there would be the, the fewer large trees means less carbon and less carbon stored means more global warming. That's the simple picture of it. Um, so elephants really do have an important role and in, in the forest, but also in the savanna. And in general, uh, when these keystone species, such as elephants and other keystone species disappear, the forest degrades, it becomes less diverse, um, and also uh, that would eventually, or that eventually affects people who depend on the forest for food, for water, for shelter, and, uh, and they would suffer as well. Now, if you look at all the land mammals on the planet, if you would put all the mammals that exist on planet Earth, you would put them on a really, really big scale, And then you would see how much each species represents in terms of weight on that scale. Then you will see that cattle weigh the most. So of all the land mammals, cattle represent the biggest biomass, as we say, followed by humans, then sheep, pigs, goats, etc. And wildlife, so wild animals only represent like 4% of the weight of all the mammals on the planet. So there's not that much wildlife left, really. And elephants are even, and you can see that lower here at the bottom, it's just one little square. So they represent a very small portion of the total weight. And elephants in particular have been declining a lot. I and mean, there used to be well, it's an estimate, but they think there used to be more than 20 million at the, the end of the 17th uh, century. And then they went down, 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 and most of it was because of hunting for ivory, but also habitat loss. And uh, there was a big decline since the beginning of the last century, and now uh, there are only about 400,000 left in the whole of Africa. So why are these elephants declining? Well, first of all, there is laws of habitat uh, for agriculture, for mining, for road building, etc. 
because the habitat that they live in becomes smaller, there's more and more conflict with elephants because they run out of food. They don't find enough food in their, in their habitat. So they go out on farms and eat you know, the food that people grow. So they get into conflict with people and they're being killed because of that. Elephants are also hunted for bushmeat, but especially in, uh, for ivory uh, to make jewelry and ornaments. So in the last nine years, there's been a decline. There's been a, a, at least 100,000, if not quite a bit more, elephants killed because of ivory. Now, what can we do to uh, protect them and to reverse this trend? We can protect elephants and their habitats. And there's a lot of actually money being invested at the moment in protection. And there's people like forest rangers you see on the picture that um, do a lot of good work and they risk their lives uh, to protect elephants uh, from poachers. But we also have to improve the lives of the people living in and around their habitat so that people do not depend, for example, on poaching or income from poaching um, because, they're so, uh, because they're so poor and desperate. And by improving their lives, they will also, um, they will also be uh, a lot more encouraged to uh, protect uh, elephants and their habitat. Uh, we can also do rewilding because there is a lot of habitat lost. Uh, we can restore habitat and even sometimes reintroduce species such as elephants and other key and keystone species. So basically restore the ecosystem that was there before. And another important thing is to curb the ivory and the wildlife trade because much of the ivory is for luxury. Uh, some people make a lot of money. Uh, by um, trading ivory and selling it. And so, uh, th so there's quite a bit of effort now uh, from police and customs to um, curb this trade. Now, what can you do for elephants and for wildlife in general? I think it's important that we value our natural environment. We depend on our natural environment, even if we're sitting inside a lot or behind our computers or whatever, we often don't know, but we really need our natural environment to survive because we get our food from it, our water, we get our climate is regulated by natural environment, etc. So it's really important to value that natural environment and to consume less, and especially products that have a big impact on animals and nature. It's important to educate people and to educate others. It's something that organizations like Elephant Addicts does and um, a lot of other organizations do. Uh, nowadays, a lot of it is through social media. So going on social media and promoting conservation with, is a good thing. Uh, writing letters to um, decision makers like politicians uh, is, is, is a good thing to do and is very helpful often. For example, recently, the Canadian government has now agreed to do something about the uh, ivory trade within Canada because of uh, people like, you know, people like you and us uh, just putting pressure on the government and writing letters to them and campaigning. You could support conservation organizations. Um, and uh, I just want to make a little promotion for uh, Ella Fanatics here. Um, so we've set up this campaign, Ivory Free Canada, to uh, lobby the government in Canada to to ban uh, domestic uh, trade in ivory. You can support that by signing up and sharing um, the uh, tweet, uh, tweets and uh, Facebook pages. I just want to say if you're interested and in, to uh, know more about how ecosystems work, uh, we just brought out uh, Dr. Tony Sinclair from the University of British Columbia and myself just brought out a book recently, uh, published a book on how ecosystems work and uh, which is focused on the Serengeti National Park. I just want to wrap up with a short video of this young elephant enjoying himself in the water and hoping that 
you know, these animals can continue their play and continue their lives in the future. And I want to thank you all. And if you have any questions, um, please ask. Fantastic, Renee. That was marvelous. And I love that video to end. It's always nice to see animals playing in the wild. It's always my <laughs> yeah. very favorite thing since I was a very little kid. Um, so that was marvelous. Um, Renee, if you want to come out of screen share, you can see us again, have a bit of a conversation. That would be great. While you're doing that, I will note for our classes, we are going to enter into our Kahoot quiz, see how much you guys are paying attention, have a little bit of fun. We are way early in this broadcast, so lots of time for Q&A after the fact as well. But if you want to head to Kahoot, you can use the pin 8840356. I'm going to bring this up on my screen screen right now so we can play this together and if you don't want to play that is totally fine you can play in your classes you can just answer the question see what you guys think we got a bunch of folks already starting to pour in which is awesome a note too for our classes we always get more questions for live animal programs or animal programs that we can possibly answer in a single broadcast so we are going to have a padlet as well so at the end of the broadcast if you have more questions you don't get answered you can head to our padlet link which i will share numerous times before we wrap up as well Renee, it's looking like we've already got 22 or so people. Uh, for those new to Kahoot, the faster you answer, the more points you get. Now, you don't win anything, but you do win Renee and I's everlasting respect. So we are going to start this in just a second, uh, and I'm excited to see what you guys uh, have to answer. All right. I think we can give them hints when there's a few seconds to spare for each of these questions, but let's dive in with question number one. All right, quiz. Multi-select. There's more than one answer here. What continents can you find elephants on? Hmm. Asia, Africa, South America, or all of them. Elephants everywhere. Antarctic elephants, Australian elephants. You can't walk 10 feet without hitting one. We've got 35 answers so far. This is back in the early parts of the presentation. And a lot of people think about a certain continent when they think of elephants. They are might they might be on more than one. This is a multi-select. 71 answers. Way to go, guys. All right. So most of you got Africa, quite a few of you got Asia as well, but it is both Asia and Africa. No elephants in Antarctica, unfortunately. Renee, you didn't cover that, and we assume that no. that is no, no, no secret elephants down there. All right, Bold and Paolo with the lead. True or false, this is a 10-second one. Elephants are some of the most intelligent animals on Earth and playful, as we saw in that last little video. What do we think? True or false? I try and make these pretty easy. <laughs> but if you want to say the other answer, you're welcome to. 80, so most of you guys got that right. Elephants are are incredibly intelligent. I mean, a lot of the things that we think of when they you think of intelligence animals, use of tools, self-recognition and, and mirrors, um, some of these sort of iconic animal behavior things, elephants pass every single test. They are uh, fantastically smart, yet more reason to, to help work to protect them. All right, our lead, oh, Lucky Leopard's taking the lead, barely. And if you guys are these people, you can let us know on the YouTube chat who you are at the end of this. What are some of the threats facing elephants? We talked about these near the end. Poaching, habitat loss, conflict with human settlements, or all of the above. Anyone who's ever done a Kahoot quiz with me before will know that I'm very fond of a certain answer when I include it into one of these Kahoots. 94 of you so far. Holy. Are there 100 Kahoot players or only 96? Let's see what our answer is. 97. So all of the above is correct. Habitat loss and poaching we talked about substantially. Uh, elephants, uh, actually a, a really cool thing I really encourage all our classes to look at in terms of conflict with elephants is um, elephants and bees. So a lot of organizations are working to protect farmers crops by planting or putting beehives surrounding them because the elephants won't cross past the beehives. They're afraid of the bees like some people are, which is super, super cool and a really neat way of sort of mitigating that conflict. All right, Lucky Leopard, oh, Wonder Duck takes a lead. We're going into number four, our final one. This is how Dr. Byers finished his presentation. What can you do to help them? Spread the word, tell your friends and family, support wildlife organizations, buy sustainably sourced products. Shocking how much that comes up. Or, again, I don't know, Renee, I, I'm going to, I'm I'm sort of thinking, I know I made the quiz, so I'm very biased, but I'm thinking it might be that final one or all of the above. 99, oh, we didn't quite get to 100, but most of you guys got that right. That is awesome. Ah, let's see our podium. And then we're going to dive in with questions. So all our live classes, I'm coming to you next. If you're on YouTube, please share there. I look forward to this. Our winner is Renee. We're number one. Almost all the points today is <laughs> da, 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 Wonder Duck. Great name. Congratulations. You on YouTube. Yes, everlasting respect from Renee and I for Wonder Duck. Um, let's dive in with this question. So I'm going to go to Madame Christie's class first. Uh, if you guys want to kick us off with a question there in Niagara. You are in, and good to go. Just unmute your mic, and you're all set. Perfect. Ooh, okay, we, go. we got it. 
Um, I have uh, one of my students behind the computer here who's going to ask a question. Do you want to say it or do you want me to? I'll say it. Okay, go ahead. What place has more biodiversity, Savannah or the tropical rainforest? Ooh, Could Savannah? You hear? Yeah, Savannah or tropical rainforest, Renee? Which place has more? Oh. <laughs> well, they're both very biodiverse, uh, but it really depends on where you are. Um, the most biodiverse place in the world, I would say is a tropical rainforest but it's not in africa it's in in south america or even in asia this um the the rainforests in south america and asia tend to be a bit more diverse than the african ones actually yeah. but in africa um it's sort of the savannah is really biodiverse too and uh, depends on where you are for example south africa southern african savannas can be very biodiverse in plant species um, but, uh, in, I would say in mammals, the savanna is, 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 is the most biodiverse place. Well, the thing too, and I mean, we've both been lucky to go, or in your case, live in these amazing places in Africa. If you're in a tropical jungle, it's really biodiverse and you can, you know, lift open a leaf and see 27 species of insect that have never been known to yeah, mankind. Exactly. But when you're yeah. in the savanna, like the fact that you can be in a landscape and be surrounded by gigantic animals of all kinds in every direction to the horizon is unique on this planet. I mean, it's just unbelievable to see the level of diversity of, you know, you've got zebra, wildebeest, lion, warthog, yeah. rhino. I mean, like it's it's unmatched on this planet. Um, and so they're both they're both very, very special ecosystems. Yeah, and I, I think it's also because it's one of the few places in on the planet where this, these animals still exist. They used to be in North America, in Europe, in Australia, also like 13,000 years ago, yeah. uh, but they went extinct due to climate change and hunting. Yeah. And, uh, but in Africa it still has all, almost all the species that it had like from 10,000 years ago. It's amazing. And it's a testament to the, the need that we have to protect these ecosystems, make sure they're there for generations to come. And again, there's such special work being done to make yeah. sure that's the yeah. case. Great question, guys. All right, Ms. Cotterello's class, let's head to you guys in Peterborough. If you want to unmute, in fact, all our teachers, if you want to unmute, we can't hear you till we bring you in the broadcast. You're good no matter what. But welcome in at Evan tonight. Hello. Uh, I have a Farah here. She's not going to show her face, but she has a question for you, doctor. Go ahead, Farah. Oh, you. What is your favorite type of elephant and why? Ooh, no pressure. <laughs> my favorite type of elephant. <laughs> They're all my favorites. <laughs> Um, yeah, <laughs> you're not, you know, you're not harboring like a grudge against the forest ones or anything. No, like that. I don't. I don't. I, um, but I, I do like the forest ones too, which may be a little less impressive than the savanna ones, but because they, they're actually quite incredible. And if you're in the field, yeah. you when you go through savanna, usually in a car, and you see it, the the animals from the car. But if you're in the forest you may literally bump into them, which is actually can be quite dangerous. And that happened to me a few times. And because they can be so quiet, they can be at like a few meters from you and you don't even know they're there. So, and then you suddenly bump into them and see them and then you've got to be really, really careful. <laughs> I've got to say, I mean, it, it's funny. I think a lot of our kids today would sort of instinctually think that something like a lion or a leopard would be the most dangerous thing. I would least want to bump into an elephant in the woods. That would be like, that's like a, yeah. one of the worst things I can I mean, very yeah. cool. As long as the elephant's facing the other way and maybe can't smell you, that would be good. Um, yeah. but just yeah. a time. great question, guys. Um, Miss Toad in class, let's head to Milton for you guys. If you want to come on in, uh, you're good to go. Hey. Hi, um, my class has a lot of questions about trunks of elephants. Um, they want to know things like if they breathe through their trunks, if they eat with their trunks. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, um, a trunk is an incredible instrument. Um, we don't have anything like that. but So it's basically, they, yes, they, what, what can they do with a trunk? They breathe. Uh, through their trunks. They use it as a nose. Uh, but they also suck up water uh, with their trunks and then uh, put it in their mouth. And they can suck up up to four to eight liters, I believe. And uh, you can see them, you know, when they, 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 they just suck it in and then, then just blow it out again in their mouth. And that's how they drink. 
uh, but they also use it to grab food, uh, to pull down trees, to to even pick small smaller trees from from the ground, um, and um, and and they use it for socializing as well. So they they when they touch each when they meet other groups they touch each other and they they put their trunks on each other etc. Yeah. yeah, it's such so, a. You're so right. It's such an extraordinary uh, thing that an animal has. And what I always love thinking about is that if we never knew elephants, like if we'd never seen them live and you just saw a skeleton of an elephant, you'd have no indication that it has this incredible thing that yeah. is both insanely strong and delicate and filled with nerve endings. It's like the you know, tip of your finger. They can touch things very delicately. Yeah. And again, yeah. I, I encourage classes to watch elephants use their trunks. There's so many videos out there on YouTube and more. Um, it, it's such a special and unique thing. Oh, yeah. One, one thing maybe to mention is that... What they think is that elephants can also communicate over large distances uh, through vibrations in the ground. So they, when they stomp the ground, uh, other elephants can pick up on these, on, on these vibrations. And they do that by putting their trunk on the ground and the, because they're so sensitive. I'd never heard that before with the trunk. Yeah, and, and, and they use their legs too, but, but the trunk is yeah. one of the... It, it's almost a hearing organ, <laughs> if you want. You know? well, so for our classes, the analogy yeah. I always like to use, if you've ever heard music really, really loud, or you've been to a concert, you feel like sometimes it's so loud that we feel like a thumping. So that's infrasound. Yeah. It's sound that we don't quite pick up on with our ears, but our bodies can register it, which is really yeah. unique. Elephants have the capacity to hear some of that. So they're that. able to yeah. communicate very, very widely. Very cool stuff. Oh, yeah. um, Mr. Shadows class, let's head to Chalk River. Mr. Ellis, I'll come to you guys next, and then we'll take a few from you two before we go for another round. Hi, Mr. Shadow. If if a human has and an elephant have trust in each other, can the human get on the elephant's back? Yeah. Sorry, um, I didn't hear that question. Yeah, yeah, no. So, Renee, the question is, if a human and elephant trust each other, is there a conceivable scenario where a human could get on an elephant's back? Well, it's possible, but it's not recommended because their back are not, they're not made for, for carrying heavy stuff. And actually, they, they use elephants um, in, uh, in Asia to carry tourists around, but it's, it's, it's not good for the elephant. So it's, it's definitely not recommended. And uh, we, we actually had a campaign in Elephant Addicts not to, uh, to go against that because it, it, can, it can damage the back of the elephant. Yeah, it's really worth noting this. This is something that comes up in a lot of our conservation programs, and it's something that all our classes can do. So whether you go on a trip internationally, increasingly unlikely if it's COVID right now, or share pictures of things, share pictures of animals being cared for really well. So high-end zoos and aquariums, places where it's a nature preserve. So if you share things where there's an animal on someone's shoulder or someone's on top of an animal they shouldn't be on, that just encourages more people to do those sort of behaviors. So I'm really glad we got that question today. Mm -hmm. It's not something that people yeah. should do if they can at all avoid it. As cool as it is, as cool as it looks, we want to make yeah. sure we're leaving animals in as wild a state as possible. So great question. Um, Mr. Ellis's class, come on in in Burlington and take us away, hey guys. Um, how do elephants clean themselves? Oh, yeah, that's a good question. Um, well, again, they use their trunk. <laughs> so they, uh, they, often, uh, they, they, they often suck up water and then they spray it on their bodies. But they do that with mud too because they have these, these parasites that live on their skin. And by putting mud and, and, or a combination of mud and water on their skin, it, uh, it, it repels those, uh, those parasites. But they also take baths, as you've seen, uh, if you've seen in uh, in the video. So they 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 love they love swimming. They love going in water, and and they clean themselves that way as well. Yeah, great question, guys. I love these. These are really unique questions today. I love it. Um, I'm going to take a few from YouTube, and then I'm going to go back to our live classes. We are whipping through these. This is marvelous. So, uh, Miss News class, Emul em, Emul Emul yeah, Thank you. Sorry. Um, how long can African elephants live for in the wild, Renee? Um. Well, they can live up to 70 years uh, in the wild. So they, they, they live long lives and, yeah. uh, and they have um, incredibly good, well, incredibly good memory. So, yeah. yeah. It's, it's something I always like to highlight whenever we talk about whales or elephants. Like these are, humans are very, very unique in the length of life that we can have as an animal. Most things are nowhere near us. Um, so the fact that elephants are comparable is really special. It, it's such a yeah. nice thing to have that level of, again, uh, understanding of the ecosystem around you built up over decades and it's something that really differentiates an uh, elephants from a lot of other animals so great question guys all right uh, mr please class another uh, superlative for elephants how heavy can they get <laughs> 
Oh, uh, yeah, it depends on which species. The savanna elephant uh, is the biggest one. They can get up to seven tons, 7,000 kilograms. Wow. Um, the forest elephant, a bit less, maybe 5,000. Yeah. So, like, this is, again, I always like to highlight my, my classic go-to comparative animals, actually a leatherback turtle, as we have programs on them before, and that's about the size of all the kids in your class. So if all the kids in your mm -hmm. class were together, you'd be about the size of one big turtle. So you are dwarfed by an elephant. An elephant's like your class. In fact, all our classes here could fit easily inside one elephant, which is pretty spectacular to think about. They really are special mm -hmm. uh, animals. All right, Mr. Hancock's class, joining us in Georgetown. Uh, they want to know, what's, Lucas wants to know, what are the biggest dangers to the elephant population? Now, you highlighted this, but I want to make sure we drive that point home for all our classes today. Yeah, the, the, I mean, there are two big threats. I mean, the, the biggest immediate threat is poaching, is, is killing of elephants uh, for ivory. Uh, but that, that ivory trade is declining gradually. So, but in the, in, in, but it will, it will remain, it will remain a big threat. But the biggest threat, I think, in the future will be habitat loss. Yeah. And I, I, of habitats. There's a great question we got in. Uh, I know Fran's joining us from Elephant Addicts as well. And you mentioned early in your talk that you've spent a lot of time talking about rewilding. Can you speak a little bit about how what yeah. that is for classes that might not know and how that can impact yeah. elephants? Yeah, rewilding recognizes the importance of a, a food web, of a well-functioning ecosystem with all the species in it that should be in there. And uh, what rewilding does is it's not just protecting existing uh, parks or, or natural areas, but it's also uh, restoring degraded systems. For example, you know, where the habitat is being degraded or where animals are being lost back to their original state. That, that is in, in, in short what it is. So, for example, if the habitat for elephants in many places is becoming too small, so with rewilding, we can restore habitat surrounds their habitat, or we can connect uh, natural habitats with each other, so that animals, uh, elephants, uh, for example, can can still have enough habitat, habitat or roam in between the habitat that is still there. So it is it is based around three important things: it is habitat protection, no natural habitat protection, and restoration. It is about connecting natural habitat with each other so animals can move between these habits and it's about um, you know augmenting or, or increasing populations of important species like keystone species like elephants yeah i love the concept of rewilding this is one of my very favorite topics i encourage all our classes i'm going to put this in a banner for everybody we did a program not too long ago on the yellowstone to yukon initiative mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. which is the sort of iconic rewilding effort in North America. So if yeah. you want to look it up on our YouTube channel, it is really, really cool. And the nice thing with rewilding is that anyone can play a role in this. If you're a yeah. classroom, you can plant a little yeah. forest in the back your ground. If you live at home anywhere, you can you know plant native wildflowers. I mean, yeah, exactly. That, which is a, a really, really fantastic thing. Yeah, even in, the, even in the city, you know, I uh, would encourage people not just to have their grass... <laughs> Yeah. grass areas but, but but plant native plants yeah and that will attack birds and insects and yeah. we're, we're going to be doing more on this come may renee we'll have to have you back and talk about okay. what <laughs> uh, but for now let's keep it on elephants i'm going to head back to madame christie's class uh and then we'll go to miss cotterello's after that for another round hey guys no okay we have one more student he's just on his way over come on over <laughs> go ahead how much do elephants eat in a day? Mm -hmm. Ooh, how much are they eating in a day? Oh, uh, I believe it's it's around 200 kilograms of food or something. 100 to, 100 to 300. I would say like, kilograms, depending like, on the size of the animal. <laughs> like four or five students. So, like, if you get yeah. with four of your friends right now in your class, an elephant eats all of you in one day. Not carnivorous wise, but that yeah, is, they uh, drink two hundred liters of water a day too. It's ridiculous. Yeah. They're such spectacular <laughs> creatures. Um, Miss Colorado, come on in. And take it away. Hi. Keep Sorry. A uh, question about range is how far. And like, how far can they, do they travel and how long can they walk? I think oh. maybe thinking about that story in the news. Yeah. yeah. So if you, t if you, if you t talk, if we talk about their home range, the area that they live in, it depends on the habitat and the productivity of the habitat. It can be small, like uh, say a hundred square kilometers, but it can also be really, really big, like up to 
three, four thousand square kilometers. And of course, to cover that range, they have to walk for hundreds and hundreds of kilometers. And, and that's what they probably used to do uh, before, you know, um, before so much of the habitat in Africa uh, was, uh, was changed, is that they, they probably walked these really, really long distances uh, for, for hundreds, if not a thousand kilometers easily. They're just, uh, again, every question we've had in this whole program, they're such incredible animal. I just, I'm so glad we got a chance to talk with you today about them. All right, Renee, we've got three more questions. Time flies and you're having fun. We are getting close to the end of the broadcast. So I'm going to go to Mr. Elsa's class first, Miss Toting, and we'll take one from YouTube. So actually really quick with the YouTube one. Uh, Nivridi in Miss Till's class wants to know, can elephants jump? I've never heard this question before. They ever like no. leap up all at once? <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen them jump, no. <laughs> I figured that was a quick one for you. Um, Mr. Ellis's class, come on in, guys. Hey. Do any animals try to eat elephants? Great question. <laughs> yeah, some uh, the, the adults, no, but the young ones, yes, they can be eaten by, uh, by, by predators, but it doesn't happen very often because um, when there are predators around, the elephants, uh, they protect the young, um, and sometimes they form this circle around all the young animals um, to protect them from predators and, and to protect them from humans too, from poachers. I encourage everyone, when you're done this broadcast, I bet this exists as like an individual YouTube clip at this point, Planet Earth, the sort of original big iconic series of the 2000s, one of my very favorite series of all time, has an elephant hunt with a whole bunch of lions, about a pride of 30 lions taking yeah. out an elephant, the sort of wow. mid-range between a youth and an adult. It's one of the most amazing pieces of nature footage ever, um, and, and very, very cool. Great question, guys. All right, Miss Tony's class, if you guys want to wrap us up, and then we'll uh, encourage classes to learn more with lots of resources. Yeah, uh, one more question from my class. Uh, they're wondering um, if elephants can sometimes be harmful. Yeah. Harmful to people? Um, maybe. Okay. Nature no, in general? They, yeah. Yes, they, they definitely can be harmful. Um, it's um, they can be dangerous. They can be very dangerous. Um, so you have to treat them with respect. Um, but what's what 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 happens in areas where their habitat has been destroyed or reduced? Uh, they get easily into conflict with humans because they're hungry. They look for food, and food grown on farms is is easy food for them. And then and then people people do get killed in the process. I can say that when uh, I was in East Africa, just uh, as a tourist there, whenever elephants were anywhere near camp, they made everyone go into big buildings and, and sort of yeah. wait out until the elephant was long gone. I mean, it's a, but, a very large, powerful animal. So. But curiously, when you're sleeping in your tent at night and you have elephants around the camp, yeah. they don't trample you. Interesting. Yeah. That's never happened? It, 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 well, it may have happened, but I, I, I don't know of any case uh, yeah. like that. And, and certainly I've, I've camped a lot with elephants around me and <laughs> it never happened <laughs> they smell you and they stay away and they can yeah. be at just just in front of your tent but just stay in your tent don't get out <laughs> don't, don't alarm the giant animal that weighs as big as much as your whole class um renee this has been so special thank you so much for sharing your insight with us today all this great information about how kids can get involved i do want to encourage everyone who's watching this broadcast live and on youtube head to elephantatics.org some really amazing resources there to keep the learning going uh, ways that you guys can get involved as a classroom to help protect elephants and as i said at the beginning if you want to share more questions i know we have uh, less time than we can possibly answer all the questions you guys have head to the padlet over the next two days we'll leave that open if you want to share any additional questions there we'll make sure they get answered so Renee, thank you so much for, for joining us today, and I really appreciate this. Well, yeah, thank you all. It was a pleasure. Thank awesome. you. <laughs> We're going to bring in our class to say a big thank you and farewell. So, Madam Christie's class, Ms. Cotterello, Ms. Tony, and Mr. Els, thank you all so much for being here, guys. Have a wonderful thank day, you. and we'll see you all.